Let's suppose we have an electron that is found in the ground state of the hydrogen atom and that electron then transitions to a higher quantum state that is given by these three quantum numbers. So this represents the excited state of the electron within the hydrogen atom. So the principal quantum number n is equal to 2, the orbital quantum number l is equal to 0, and the magnetic quantum number ml is also equal equal to zero. Now we saw when the electron is found in the ground state, the shape of our electron cloud produced by that ground electron is that of a symmetric sphere. Now what about the shape, size, and orientation of the electron cloud that is produced by the electron within this excited state? Well, to answer this question, we have to basically take Schrodinger's equation and solve Schrodinger's equation for the wave function that describes the behavior, the shape and size of this particular electron within this quantum state. So, we can solve Schrodinger equation to obtain the wave function that describes such an excited electron. Now, in this lecture, we're not going to worry too much about the process of solving this equation. Instead, we're simply going to give you the end result. This is the wave function that describes our excited electron within this quantum state. So, instead of focusing on the mathematical details, in this lecture, we're going to to focus on the meaning behind this equation. So, the wave function that describes our electron within this quantum state, n equals 2, l equals 0, and ml equals 0, is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 32 multiplied by pi multiplied by the Bohr radius cubed given by r naught. That's multiplied by 2 minus r divided by r naught, and that is multiplied by e to the power of negative negative r divided by 2r uh, naught, where r naught, once again, is Bohr radius. Now, in this form, this equation, this wave function, is not very useful. So, for this equation to be physically meaningful and measurable, we must take the square of the absolute value of both sides of this equation. So, basically, we take the right side and we multiply it by itself and we obtain the following result. So, this gives us the probability density or the probability distribution of our our electron that tells us the probability of finding our electron at some position r away from the center of our nucleus of that atom. Now if we take the right side and the left side and multiply both sides by 4 pi r squared which represents the surface area of the sphere with the radius r that will give us the radial probability density given by p with the r sub so basically, we take this multiplied by 4 pi r squared and we get the following result. So this equation is the radial probability distribution of the electron found in the excited quantum state that is given by these three quantum numbers. Now this equation is very useful because it basically tells us the probability of finding our electron within some specific region around our nucleus of our hydrogen atom. So let's begin by taking this probability density and determining the shape and the size of our electron cloud that is produced by this electron within this quantum state. So by plotting the square of the absolute value of the wave function, we see the area or the region where the electron is most likely found. So we basically see the following two spherical regions. So these dense regions represent our most likely location of our electron. And in the same way that the 1s electron cloud has a spherical shape the 2s also has a spherical shape, but this one is much larger than the 1s. 
So basically, because this outer region is more dense than this inner region, that means our electron, when it's found within this quantum state, is more likely to be found within this outer region that has a radius of, approx of approximately 5 multiplied by r naught than this inner region with a radius of r naught, where once again r naught is Bohr's radius. It's a quantity that is equal to 5.2. 29 times 10 to negative 11. So we see that our electron is more likely to be found in this outer region than this inner region. Now this fact can be confirmed by plotting the radial probability density, this equation, on the x-y axis, where the x-axis is the distance r from the center of our nucleus of the atom, and this y-axis is the probability or the radial probability distribution. So if we plot this equation, we basically get the following curve. So notice we have two peaks and this peak is lower than this peak. So basically, what exactly is the meaning of the y-axis? So the higher the value of the PR, the higher the value of our radial probability density, the more likely our electron is found at that particular position. And notice we have two peaks. This smaller peak corresponds to the inner region on this diagram, and this larger peak corresponds to this outer region. And we see that our electron is more likely to be found at the higher peak at this position than at the lower peak. So once again, graphing the radial probability density versus distance r from the center of the atom, we see the following two peaks. The second peak at about r equal to 5 multiplied by r naught correspond to the most probable position of our electron in the hydrogen quantum in the hydrogen atom with the quantum state of n equals 2l equals 0 and ml equals 0. 